I'm about to spend the next three days right here in the jungle. I've got a knife, a backpack, and I've also got a hammock. I've got a few basic supplies, such as spices and rice. Find out what really happens by staying tuned until the end of the video. Snakes and biders out to trying to get you. You're lucky we didn't cook you tonight. I see a frog, I see a frog right there. It's been raining for about two hours. We got four in total. Is a poisonous caterpillar. Tiger sighted. No, we can't eat this species. Oh, missing. The night safari. Sleeping carrot. The frog is actually really good. Rebirth of Cicada. We're currently on our way to the national park. We're down here, there's a stream and a stream there. Well, it's more like a river and a little stream there. We're surrounded by nature, there's bamboos, there's palms and there's all sorts of beautiful nature. Anyway, what we're doing right now is we're gonna try and catch some frogs. The reason being is because all we have with us is a handful, maybe two handfuls of rice. Yes, it's gonna get us through the, the next few days, but we need some meat, we need a bit more protein and there's nothing better than catching your own food. So we're here outside the national park and we're gonna hopefully catch some big frogs to cook up. To be honest with you, I've never had a leech on my leg or anywhere in my body before, so all I know is that you just have to pull them off. <laughs> Got it. And here it is. Here's the leech, and now it's trying to attach itself to my finger. Ah, get off. <laughs> anyway, that's one leech down. I'm sure there's going to be many, many more. And who knows what else the jungle is going to throw at us, because to be honest with you, so far it seems like everything is out to get you. So if you're wondering what Jaja's doing, he's actually making something that we're gonna use for cooking. We haven't got any cooking pots, so we're gonna be cooking, boiling, frying, whatever we need to do with this bamboo. Not only that, we're also gonna be making cups and plates. And that's leech number two. Welcome to the jungle. And after when we do like this, we put in the bamboo, right? But it's, uh, if you just put like this, the rice, right, they're not ready. Because they have, uh, when you put water, water, they can't come through the leaf because okay. they have air. Okay. And then my technique, I'm at to break. Oh yeah, make holes so water can go inside. Yet and put. And this right we have to cook for lunch also uh, tomorrow Mountain rock. Yes. Yes. 
and look at this we've got another two frogs no three so we got four in total So I think I've worked out why they call it the rainforest. Well, it's been raining for about two hours. Anyway, check out this spider, and I hate spiders. Look at the size of that. Absolutely huge. You know what, I'm wearing shorts. I should really, I might put some trousers on. I just love how resourceful bamboo is. So I'm just about to sample the red curry. Woo! <laughs> okay, he did ask me how spicy I liked it and I said, yeah, you know, a little bit of spice, not a crazy amount. I don't think he listened. <laughs> but it's really, really tasty. Really nice coconut tea and he's put some uh, garlic and all sorts in it. It's absolutely delicious. So if you're wondering what we brought with us, well, we've got a backpack each and in that we've got a hammock and a tarp, along with, well, we've both got a machete and we've also got a few spices, which Jar Jar brought along. A few basic spices like, like some herbs and some chili and some garlic and so on. So it's just a flavor, I'll make a bit more of a broth or a bit more of a flavor, some soup out of what we catch and put into it. Up until now, I think we've put about six or seven frogs into it. Ginormous frogs. And there's also those green leaves that we collected earlier. Again, I'm not too sure what they were, but I'll try and make sure I get a translation put up on the screen. Just look at how incredible this looks. This bamboo, he's made all these plates and he's even got a few candle holders right there. Cooking good in the jungle. So this is the frog curry. We got the rice and then the leaves that we collected earlier. Let's try the leaves. Mmm, coconut flavoured leaf, really good, mm. that was really good, really good aftertaste. Try to thumbnail for it. Smell. Mm -hmm. Smells good. Thumbnail from the leaf, right? Yeah, smell the leaf, but it tastes good. I can, in Thai we can buy a Rhino leaf or something. Rhino leaf. Yeah, same taste is from banana.
Thank you very much. I'll tell you what, the frog is actually really good. Mmm. And the green leaves. Delicious. So we've just been sitting here for the last 40 minutes eating this food, you know, having a little bit, little and often, great way to eat. I've got to say the frog's legs, the meat was so tender. It reminded me of like, of like chicken thighs. And the rice, again, that was amazing. Really well cooked, beautifully cooked actually. Uh, and it was all, again, just all cooked in the river water. And then I can't stop talking about these greens. They're just incredible. Okay, it, it probably helps to have all that coconut flavoring, but they're absolutely delicious. Yeah, but yeah, the green curry with the frog's legs, definitely something to try again. And I've just been told we're about to go out for a night hike because we need more frogs. Frogs that we're gonna cook up tomorrow for breakfast. Yes, another frog, so that's two frogs. That one is a big frog. Huge. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we see one more later. Ah, oh, I just missed the frog. So the, the idea is that you, what you do is you use your torch and you see their eyes, they reflect back and then they have this really big white belly. Then the idea is to blind them with the torch as you're walking over, keep the torch in their eyes and then you grab them. But I missed it. But look what I've just found on my bag just as I got back here to camp. And no, we can't eat this species. He's just chilling out of my backpack. Go on, mate, watch out. I need to get to my backpack. Excuse me. Watch out. <laughs> Look at him. Now he's stuck in the corner. Whoa! <laughs> he landed on that tree. Look, he landed right on that tree. What a jump. Whoa, what was that? Check that out. It's like a jungle cockroach. Okay, so Jojo's gone to bed. He's asleep in his hammock and I've decided that I'm gonna try and catch a frog. <laughs> Missed it. I really wanna catch one. Whoa, check out these little prawns. Okay, so I've walked about 15 minutes downstream of the camp and I've just realized it's too late. I'm on my own and whoa, and there's just too many animals out there to get me. I know there's tigers here because a few days ago, there were a few people that were out trekking and they saw tigers. I also know there's elephants and there's, and today we saw things like lemurs and whoa, oh, it's deep. And then we saw the pit vipers. There was two pit vipers and I have to, I had to walk past them about within about a meter of them. Yeah, pretty scary. All right, so I've been venturing downstream for about the last 25, 30 minutes. I feel a little bit out of my comfort zone. So I'm gonna turn around because I'm out of the, out of our safe area, which is what he described earlier is the smoke zone. So I've kind of left that little bit of smoke zone to try and find a bit of, a bit of wildlife. But I do keep thinking if there's tigers, there's other big cats, there's elephants, and there's all sorts of snakes and spiders out trying to get you. Anyway, I'm gonna head back to camp and hopefully make it back alive. And I'll give you a little update in a minute. Well, there's a bit of a drop there. I'm trying to get back. Whoa, whoa, whoa check this one out. Ah, oh, got you. 
Look at that little crab right there. Let go of that leaf. <laughs> it's crazy. Freshwater crabs. Let's put them in here. Look, another crab. Another crab right there. There you go, mate. You're lucky we didn't cook you tonight. <laughs> I see a frog. I see a frog right there. But actually, oh, it's the it's the wrong species anyway. Look, there he goes. <laughs> and he's right there. Oh, missed it. Oh no, it looks like the termites found my backpack. <laughs> well folks, good morning from the camp. I slept really well. It's a real shame I didn't manage to get any frogs last night. But tonight I'm determined to catch a frog or a fish or something like that. In the meantime, jaja has been cooking up some breakfast, the usual rice and all sorts of things to go with it. And check out these cups he's made out of bamboo. So he's just heated up some water so we can have a, a hot drink. He's made these lovely bamboo cups and a little stirring spoon. <laughs> How cool is that? Mm. Give me some spoon. Oh no, another leech. Leech number three. So we've had our breakfast and I've just packed away my camp and so has Jaja. We're now going to make our way down the river for about another 10, maybe 12 kilometers and find another place to camp. Leech number four. Oh. <laughs> We're searching for the waterfall. The plan for the next few days is to eat, sleep and live right here in the wild. What I'm fascinated in is the way of the jungle. So I have with me a local guide. In fact, he was raised in the jungle ever since he was a child. He knows the jungle inside out. Things like the bamboo, what you can do with the bamboo, where you can find food, where you can find water and where you can find materials for building, sleeping and eating. Up until now, we've come across chameleons, two pit viper snakes, three tarantula holes, which we've tried to tickle out with a stick with no joy. Hopefully later on we'll find a tarantula or two. We've also been eating leaves along the way, young leaves. I'm not sure what the name is, but I'll put it in the description. And my guide Jaja, he tells me that tonight there's a good chance we'll be catching something from the river or this stream to eat tonight. We've also heard gibbons and lemurs. And as you can see, I am dripping from head to toe. It's so hot, it's so humid, there's no way of drying off. I just feel like a wet sponge. But you know what? Even though I'm dripping head to toe, I'm enjoying this so much. I'm slightly out of my comfort zone. Many of you know me for things like bushcraft and survival, building shelters, catching things, eating wild food, preparing food over a fire at nighttime at the campsite or even in the woods. But no, this is again slightly out of my comfort zone. I'm super thrilled to be here. I'm just constantly dripping with sweat. I'm running out of water. My guide, Jaja, he tells me that what we need to do is we need to find some really thick bamboo, almost as thick as this stuff behind me. However, we're looking for thicker stuff. Just look at how tall this stuff is. It's probably about 20, maybe 25 meters tall. Anyway, let's keep going. We've just come to the river. We're now gonna follow it along, and hopefully get to the waterfall. Okay, so it's about hour six. Made it down the second mountain into this little valley bit found the stream, it's really clear, it's so refreshing. I've just put loads of cold water in my face. That was the best thing ever. I 
I've just been told this tree is about 500 years old. It is absolutely ginormous. Oh, oh this is so cold. Woo! <laughs> it's so cold, it's lovely and refreshing. Oh. 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 <laughs> It's so good! It's so good! It's so good! I love it! So Jaja just pointed out that there's a mangrove snake in that branch. It's really difficult to see, but it's about... about there. Oh, another leech! Elephant footprints. And we finally made it after hours and hours walking through the rainforest. And you can just see, I'm just dripping with sweat. What I'm gonna do, get this off, I'm gonna put my swimming shorts on and I'm gonna jump in for a swim because this water is freezing cold. Well, compared to the air temperature, which is like 38 degrees. Really cold and I just need to cool down and just refresh my, oh, look at the size of that fish right there. Oh, anyway, let me introduce you to the camp. This camp is a camp that Jaja has used a few times in the past and he's even built a little place where there's a table. And do you remember last night we had the rain? Well, we had to use a plastic tarp to put the tarp over the fire to keep the fire dry because it rained a lot last night. Remember, I'm in the rainforest and they call it the rainforest for a reason. That's because it rains a lot. So this platform, this kind of like roof, that just protects the fire from that heavy downpour. It means that what we do is we get a big fire going and as there's a roof, it's gonna stop the fire from being put out by the rain. Anyway, I need to go for a swim. So if you're wondering what I'm drinking, well, I'm drinking water. Well, this is purified filtered water from the river. I'll show you a little bit later on when I need to fill up my bottles. because so I've got about four of these in total. I, I fill them up about two or three times a day. You wouldn't believe how much I'm sweating, how much I'm drinking but you just constantly need to drink water. I'll show you how I filter it later on. So I just had to pull another leech off me. You can see the blood it's been sucking out. Everything in the jungle is out to get you. I'm forever looking over my shoulder, looking for elephants, tigers, snakes, scorpions, tarantulas. Everything seems it just wants to get you. Oh, you would not believe how good that feels. So I just found another leech. I'm not gonna tell you where it was. I'm not gonna show you where it was. So we'll just add it to the leech count. Time to put the tarp up, because it's about to rain.
Look at all those fish. So it's just another day eating frogs and rice for dinner. Mm. It's really good. Mm. Frogs legs, just like chicken thighs. Mm. Really soft and tender meat. Well, dinner was good. So the plan now is I'm gonna have a go at making a candle holder, a bit like the one that we had last night around the camp. And also I've just been told that tonight we're gonna to go on a bit of a night safari, jungle night safari coming up. So we're just heading back into the jungle. We need three more things. We need more bamboo. We need some heart of palm, which we're gonna be eating tonight. And we also need a bit of firewood. And if you're wondering what the heart of palm is, well, it's the inner core that you get when you cut down a banana tree. So this is it. This is what we're looking for. You get these clumps of banana trees growing all over the jungle. And this is one we're gonna take down. You can see there's no bananas on it. So we're just gonna take it down and eat the core. It's like unwrapping a giant Christmas present. There's layer after layer after layer. <laughs> okay, that's it. We're gonna take this back to the camp. We'll process it when we get back. I am sweating, drenched in sweat.
Okay, it's a few hours later and we've just set off on a bit of a night safari. Oh, we just spotted a little deer. That there is called a cicada and it's attached to the tree because it's about to shed its shell. <laughs> and that there, I've just been told, is called a paradise bird. But you probably can't see it. If I get any closer, I'm just going to wake it up and it's going to fly away. So I'm going to try not to do that. And these are some wild jungle figs which Jaja has just picked because he's going to cook them up later on. That thing is huge. It's a giant centipede. Check out what we've just come across. A sleeping parrot. I think that's a giant cricket. All right, we've just stopped because there's a giant tarantula, but we can't get any closer because if we do, we'll scare it and I'll go back into its hole. That there is a golden spider. So as I'm walking along, I keep looking behind me to make sure there's no reflections or basically eyes reflecting back. And I've just been told that there's two types of eye reflections in the jungle. One is green, green eat vegetables and plants. Red eye reflection, they're meat eaters. So, <laughs> which means I'd much rather a green eye looking back at me than a red eye. There's another deer right there. They're really small deer, but we've seen about four or five of them so far. Look at the size, look at the thickness of this bamboo. It's huge. Whoa, what is that? It's like a giant beetle. Whoa, what is that? Almost stepped on it. Uh -huh. Giant spider right there. If anyone knows what type of spider that is, please let me know. Look at that bad boy right there. He is huge. And there's one thing I absolutely hate, and that'll be spiders. Look at the size of it. Woo! <laughs> Almost stepped on it. Okay, we've just seen another tarantula, but it was too far away to capture it on camera. And the thing about tarantulas is, every time you go anywhere near them, they back up into their hole and they hide. Check this out, this is called a gliding lizard. So do you remember earlier when I mentioned that there was a cicada attached to the tree and that's what they do moments before they climb out of their, of their old shell? Basically, just like a snake, they shed their skin, or a bit like a crab, they shed their shell and they climb out of it and then they grow bigger and grow a harder, bigger shell. And we just happen to have captured the moment coming back a good hour later where the cicada is now growing out of his old shell. And look at the color of him, he's green. This is actually really cool. It's like watching an insect being reborn. Look at that, he's climbing out of the shell. Already he looks bigger than he was. And I've just found out that what they do is they, they climb out, they hold onto the tree, they wait about four hours until their wings are strong enough to carry them away. 
So there you go folks, that is the rebirth of a cicada. And if you don't know what a cicada is, they're the ones that make the really loud noises in the jungle. And here we are back at camp, now it's time to tuck into a bit of food. Look at all those fish. Oh, look at that. Look at that, that's huge. So it's about 11 p.m. I've gone for a little walk around the camp because Jaja has gone to bed. I think I've just found a baby tarantula. I've scared it, I've scared it. It went back in. It went back in the hole. It's like playing with a cat. Cool. Wow, they look dangerous. And that is the end of another day fueled on only rice and frogs. Good morning from another day here in the jungle. So breakfast today is a rice based pudding and to go with it we got some of this heart of palm. So this is from the banana palm that we cut down yesterday and when I break it you'll see there's these like they look like spider webs attached to it. This is really good stuff. Mm and then a cup of jungle tea. And this is how the water was boiled in this thin bit of bamboo. Six years. Six years. What's that? You can hear it. Six years? Yes. Wow. Bit from the rattan. Can put? I check it with your hand. Not it's my hand. <laughs> so I've had breakfast and Jaja surprised me by making me a souvenir. And that is what he's made. He's woven it out of rattan. And in return, I'm going to give him this. And if you don't know what this is, this is a titanium spork. You can get these on the bushcrafttools.com website. This for you. Present. Souvenir. Thank you, sir. So now that Jar Jar's got his merch, if you don't have any, click the link below. But on a more serious note, I just want to say it's been three days now and it's been a great experience. I haven't filmed everything 
because there's so much to take in the nature the sounds the skills the everything it's just been incredible so yeah if you're still watching thank you so much um you know jaja he's got some really good skills like when he hears a noise you can see him he'll get up he'll go to the edge of the tree he'll look in different ways and he'll listen and put his hands like that he'll turn to me he'll call me over say oh he, he'll try and explain what the animal is what the sound is that we're hearing Jaja is so in tune with this environment it's just fascinating just watching him act and react to the sounds and the skills he does he's a fascinating character and let's just have a little backstory Jaja was brought up in the jungle by his family he's been telling me lots of different stories for example one story was when he was a kid for, his, for the whole time he could remember he slept in the jungle on a raised bamboo platform with no mosquito net for years and years and years just had to rely on the smoke from the fire to put the mosquitoes off but then he told me that in the mornings you wake up and your throat hurts so what do you do do you want to wake up with a bad throat because of the smoke or do you want to wake up covered in mosquito bites then there's another story he told me and that was that before hammocks what they would do is they would climb up trees and they would sleep about 15 meters up into the tree and this is because they would do that in order to avoid animals for example predatory animals like, such as tigers and, and or even things like elephants that could come and hunt you down and kill you or bears so it's stories like that where you know that's the reality of the situation here is that you need to camp up high in the trees to avoid any dangerous animals and that's what he was doing when he was a kid as well and it's it's really allowed me to just escape you know turn my phone off for like three days no technology that I've been distracted by just mother nature the sound of the flowing river and these fish swimming around me constantly this really has been a great experience you know I live a life that is so far away from the life Jaja lives not only is it the other side of the world, but also I live in a world where everyone has these consumables, these items, these, these unnecessary items that we have in our lives. And it's only now when you switch your phone off for three days that you realize and you think back about all those things you have at home that you really don't need. Do they really make you happy? No. This, this is my happiness right here. So these are the fish we're actually trying to catch last night, but we didn't manage to. So on that note, let's pack away the cab. So that is it, camp packed away. What a beautiful location. So we've now got about a three hour walk back to the main path, which will lead us then about three kilometers down that path to the main village. And that's where we started. On the road again. Oh yeah, do you remember that tarantula from last night? Well, this is where it lives. He lives in that hole right there. Let's see if we can give him a little tickle, wake him up. There he is. <laughs> oh. Is like playing with a cat. So thinking back to last night's safari, I think the highlight for me was not only seeing about six deer, but it was seeing that insect, that cicada. When we first walked past it, it was just attached to the tree and we knew it was about to shed its shell or its skin. It was about to climb out, but I didn't realize how short of a time it would take for it to happen. And probably about an hour, maybe an hour and a half later, that's when we walked back past it and you could see it's kind of almost green looking body, alien like body emerging from its shell. That was like something you see on TV. So, so I'm really happy that I captured that on camera. Okay, I'm about to walk past that tree with the cicada on it. So we know what we saw last night before and during. Let's see what it looks like after. Right there. Look at that. That is its empty shell. And that's where it climbed out of that hole right there. Isn't that just incredible? It's something you see on like a nature documentary. 
no chance. Judge was just saying that the deer that we saw last night, those are the sort of deer or animals that feed on these seed pods once they reach the ground. There's a monkey up there. But that's what I was talking about earlier, how Jaja is so in tune with nature and he can talk to the animals in the way that they talk back to him or talk to themselves. So it's really high up this tree, sitting high up in the canopy. He's now calling a bird. Can you hear it calling back? Nice, it smells like mango. What is this? This flower, uh, with, they call it champoon. Jaja just pointed out this flower and it smells really, it smells just like mango. And it's called jamboon. 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 Can eat? No. Oh, I just want to eat it, it smells so good. Jamboon or jamba, nah, but they smell good. Smell very good, jamboon or jamba. So that flower actually has a song that goes with it. And that's exactly what Jar Jar is singing right now. Alright, it's so hot walking along, about an hour in, a couple of hours left. But remember the cicada insect that we saw last night and earlier on? This is where they live, they actually live in the ground. They burrow themselves into the ground and they kick out all the soil and it almost creates almost like a mini termite mound. This is what I mean. So this is where they live and if you lift this off, you'll see a hole. A hole in the ground and that's exactly where they live. How amazing is nature? I think it's fascinating. So there's a bit of bamboo down here and I've now got a straw. So did you know that bamboo produces water? Not every species, some species produce water that you can drink. Jaja has just pointed one out. And what he's done is he's cut into the bamboo and then using this straw. That's ah, fresh, it's just fresh water. It's not sweet, there's no bitterness to it. It's just it just tastes like bottled spring water. Mm. Great survival tip. This sort of bamboo holds water. Not every type, not every section has water, but you quite often find water in them. And there's a good maybe quarter of a litre right here. <sighs> that was really good. Who needs a plastic straw when you have bamboo? Right, let's keep walking. So Jaja was just explaining to me that this tree, if you cut into it, it'll seep a, a resin. And that resin is black in colour and it's actually rubber. He was telling me that traditionally they would use that rubber to seal the bits of wood on boats in order to stop leaks or to stop the water from coming in. So yeah, I thought that was quite interesting. Rubber tree growing here in the forest, which they extract rubber from in order to use for things like containers and boats is a poisonous caterpillar. And if you know what species of caterpillar that is, please let me know in the comments. It's so hot, you would not believe how hot it is, how humid it is, and how once your clothes are wet, they never really dry. It's hot.
So that flower we just saw, that was called a Rafflesia. It flowers between December and January every year and is only open for about four or five days. It's the largest flower in the world. Many of you might know it because you've seen it on TV or on nature documentaries. It's also the smelliest flower in the world, which is why there's lots of flies surrounding the flower at any one time. Look at the monkey, it's got a baby. How cool was that? Hey, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? Okay, check out this tarantula hole that Jar Jar's just found. This is why you need a guide, you know? I saw it, I saw it. So a few days ago, Jar Jar was told that there was a tiger sighted in this national park, well, right here in the rainforest. And he's now doing a bit of trekking to see if he can find any footprints. So folks, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much if you're still watching. You know, this has been a real experience for me. It's taken me slightly out of my comfort zone. I have mentioned a few times that I'm really scared of spiders, always have been. However, I found myself not being scared of them and almost, I was, I was almost fearless around the spiders. Okay, long story short, this is the end of the video. I wanna give a massive, massive thanks to Jaja. Jaja, thank you so much. He's been such a great guide. He's shown me he's full of knowledge. He's full of skills. It's incredible what I've seen, what I've heard, what I've learned over the last few days. So again, Jar Jar, thank you very much. Guys, if you haven't already, please hit the red button and subscribe. I've got more of these videos coming up. I've only done three days here in the jungle. If you want to see me come back here and do maybe five days, maybe a week back here with Jar Jar, you comment five days or a week right now. Thanks again. See you next time. Goodbye.